Hey there tech fans, Rick here again with another review, and today I have the UHD-EXP400-KVM HDMI Extender and KVM Kit. This product allows you to share all of your HDMI media content from one location with a second location up to 150 meters away over a single Cat6 cable. The product fully supports 4K ultra high definition media content. It also allows you to connect a keyboard mouse at the remote location so you can actually control a computer connected at the primary location. The kit also includes a set of infrared blasters that will collect up the remote control signals from that secondary location and pass those back over that same LAN cable to the primary location so you can control the content you're watching. Now as part of this overview, I always like to start with an unboxing of a product just to show you all the components that are included with the kit. And then I'll take a closer look at the transmitter and receiver modules and explain the connections and indicators. I'll also come back at the end and point out a few things that really separate this kit from a lot of the other HDMI extender kits on the market. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open up the box, you'll find the transmitter module, the receiver module, a set of brackets you can use to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. You'll find a set of infrared blasters as well. One is a receiver and one is a transmitter, and it's important you match those up with the correct module. You'll also find a single power supply. It's a 24 volt DC one amp power supply. You can plug this into a wall outlet, plug the other end of it into the receiver unit or the transmitter unit. Because this product uses power over cable technology, you really only need one power supply to supply power for the entire solution. Also included with the kit is a connection cable for the primary location so you can connect the transmitter module up to your computer. Also, you'll find a warranty card and a full instruction manual included with the kit that explains everything you need to know about the product to use it correctly. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at both modules, and then I'll come back and point out some unique things that really separate this from other HDMI extension kits on the market. Inside the kit, you'll find the sender unit and the receiver unit. The sender unit is located wherever the PC is today, and the receiver unit is placed wherever you'd like to remotely control that PC. You'll also find a 24 volt, one amp DC power supply. This end plugs into any standard wall outlet and the other end has a barrel connection on it and you can plug that into the sender or the receiver. Because the solution uses power over cable technology, if you plug it into the sender, all the power required for the receiver unit is sent over the same LAN cable you'll use for communication. Also included are two infrared blaster modules and you'll notice they're slightly different. There's a larger head and a smaller head. The larger head is the receiver unit, and that gets plugged into the infrared in port. And the smaller head is the transmitter, and that gets plugged into the infrared out. And it's important you plug these into the correct ports for proper operation. You'll also find a unique cable here that gets plugged into the sender unit. This end plugs into the module. The other end has a USB-A connection on it, which plugs into your PC. And that provides communication for remote control of the mouse and the keyboard at the secondary location. Now we'll take a closer look at both of the modules and I'll start with the sender module. On the front you'll find a power indicator on the left. When you add power to the unit it starts an internal power on self-test and when it completes that it'll light that LED letting you know the module is ready to use. To the right of that is an EDID switch and you can adjust the frame rate and the resolution by flipping that switch up and down and that's fully explained in the manual. You'll also find a service port all the way on the right. That's a micro USB port that's used for pushing new firmware to the module if needed later on. You'll connect the micro USB cable from here to your computer, move the firmware file over to the module to complete the upgrade. On the bottom, you'll find ventilation slots that are designed to keep the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature, as well as on both sides. You'll also find mounting holes on the bottom you can use with the included bracketing kit to mount this up off the ground and out of the way. On the rear of the module, starting on the left, you'll find a DC power port. That's used with the included power supply, and again, you can plug it in here or plug it into the other module and tighten the collar so it doesn't pop out. To the right of that is a LAN port. That's where you'll connect one end of the CAT6 or CAT7 cable between this module and the other one. To the right of that is an HDMI input port. You'll connect up an HDMI cable from here to your computer so you can actually send that media content to the remote location. To the right of that are the two infrared blaster ports, infrared in and infrared out. Again, make sure you plug the right module into the right port. And finally, to the right of that is the PC connection I mentioned a minute ago. You'll use the included cable to connect this up to a USB-A port on your PC for connection at the remote end for the wireless mouse and keyboard. Now we'll take a look at the receiver. Again, a very similar setup. On the front, you'll find a power indicator on the left, a service port on the right, ventilation slots on the bottom, mounting holes for the brackets, and on the rear of the unit, again, there's another power port here. If you've plugged the power supply in on the sender end, you won't have to worry about that. This LAN port, is where you'll plug in the other end of the CAT6 or CAT7 cable from the sender unit. 
To the right of that is an HDMI output port. That'll connect up to whatever monitor you'd like to use at the remote location. Two more infrared blaster ports, infrared in and infrared out. Again, make sure you plug the right module into the right port. And then finally to the right of that are two full-size USB-A ports where you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse. And that gives you complete control of the computer at the remote end. And all the signals here are being sent over that same LAN cable, including the power required for that other module. Now I'd like to do a quick demonstration just to show you how simple the system is to use once you get it home. And for this demo, over here I've set up my computer just like I have it in my office today. My keyboard, my mouse, and my monitor are here, and that's where I use my computer most of the time. But every now and then, I like to sneak off to the den where it's a little bit quieter when the kids are home, just so I can get some work done. And that's what I've set up over here, a second monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and that represents the remote location where I like to control that computer from. I have the sender module here and the receiver module here. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the sender module, and I'll start by disconnecting my monitor from the computer and plugging that into the HDMI input port on the back of the sender module. Now if you don't want to do that manually every time, you can use an AB switch like I do that has an infrared remote control. And the cool thing is this particular system actually has infrared blasters on both sides that will pick up the remote control signals from that remote location and send those back over the same LAN cable to rebroadcast here. So if you have a switch that has an infrared remote, you can leave that at the remote location and actually switch between local monitor and remote monitor just by tapping a button on that remote. The next connection I'll make is the USB connection to the PC because remember, you've got to be able to transfer the mouse and keyboard signals to your PC for control. This comes with the kit. You'll plug one end into the sender. The USB-A end plugs into any available USB-A port on your computer. The only thing I'm missing now is power. I've already plugged that power supply in. The other end of that has a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the power port on the back of the sender module. Now, another cool thing about this product is it uses power over cable technology, which essentially means I can plug the power supply in on either end, and the required power for the other module is sent across that LAN cable, which really simplifies wiring. I've plugged it in over here. Now we're ready to connect up the receiver module at the remote location. First connection I'll make is a short HDMI cable from the monitor to the HDMI output port. And then once I plug that in, I'm ready to connect my network up between these two. Now again, that has to be a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable. I have a short CAT6 cable right here. I'll plug it into the receiver. And before I plug it into the sender, notice the LED is off. Watch this. When I plug it into the sender module, that LED comes on. So you can see that the power required for this module is being sent across the same LAN cable. They're both going through a power on self-test right now. Any second, they'll sync up and you'll see the display come to life right there with the image that you would have normally on your computer. So essentially, I've got an HDMI extension kit set up right now where the video from here is being sent across this LAN cable to the secondary location. But the really cool thing about this particular system is that it has KVM functionality built in, which means I can use a keyboard and a mouse at the remote site, and all those signals are being sent over that CAT6 cable back to the primary site to control the computer. Now you can use a wired keyboard and mouse if you want. I like wireless products, so I've got a dongle here. I'll plug that into one of the two USB-A ports on the back, and you can see immediately I've got control now of the computer. So think about that a second. You're controlling the computer from the den, which could be hundreds of feet away from the PC, and the only connection between the two is a CAT6 or CAT7 LAN cable, and it gives you complete control. So I think it's a pretty cool system. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when comparing the O-Ray HDMI extender and KVM kit to others you may be considering. And the first thing has to do with its functionality. This product is really a combination unit where it has an HDMI extension function, which basically allows you to send 4K ultra high definition media content to a second location, again, up to 150 meters away over a single CAT6 cable. There are a lot of kits on the market that do that, but that's a one directional transmit. This actually has bi-directional transmission because it also includes a KVM functionality at the remote location that will send signals back to the primary location. So if you connect a computer up here, you can connect a keyboard and mouse up here and actually control that computer while you're watching the output from that computer. So it's bi-directional. It also includes a power over cable technology, which is really a time saver because it means you only need a single power supply at either the primary or secondary locations to provide all the power the system requires. The inclusion of the infrared blaster kits is another bonus because that allows this system to collect up the remote control signals at that secondary location and send those back over the same CAT6 cable to the primary location to be rebroadcast to control the content you're watching. 
If the solution you're considering doesn't have that infrared blaster functionality, you'll have zero control at that remote location over the content that's being played at the primary location. So you'll basically start the video and have to just watch it front to back. You won't be able to stop it, fast forward it, rewind it, or any of the functions you're used to at the primary location. It's also built inside of a metal enclosure, which is really important. A lot of these HDMI extension kits come in a plastic enclosure. The metal enclosure makes it much more durable, and it also helps to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the sensitive electronics inside because HDMI signals are really susceptible to outside noise from vacuum cleaners and fluorescent lights and other noise generating appliances. And having a metal cabinet like this really knocks down all of that external uh, interference and it's not gonna cause problems or degrade the signal being sent to that secondary location. And the last thing I'll mention is the connection between these two is a CAT6 which is a really inexpensive, very, very common cable. A lot of these kits on the market require a higher level of CAT cable, maybe a seven or an eight, which tends to be very expensive. And that means you've got to run new cabling between your locations. With this one, a single CAT6 cable is all you need for both the power over cable transmission, the transmission of the HDMI signals to the remote location, and the transmission of the KVM signals back to the primary location. So it's an incredibly simple kit to install and everything you need to get started is included with the box. So. I hope you found this review helpful, and until next time, stay nerdy.